Okay, so I haven't made a video for a while. So if you can hear that noise in the background, it is the washing machine, which of course is going to go on spin cycle as soon as I do this. So I'm looking pretty rough. I've um, got my hysterectomy tomorrow. So I'm having a total laparoscopic hysterectomy, um, which means it's keyhole and they're taking everything bar the ovaries as long as they're okay. Um, so I've been so nervous and messed up the last like week or so. I've been doing stupid things like go to school, pick up an hour early, not realising it was an hour early. Um, I've got a little bit of a cold started today, so where I've got a to-do list as long as my arm to get stuff ready for hospital, um, I haven't been able to. I've just decided it was more important to rest, um, to not let this cold get worse, because um, they should still go ahead with surgery. I mean, it's only a tiny sniffle. Um, I believe it's only if I've got a, like, a temperature that they'll say nope. And I'm really hoping that doesn't happen. I feel better overnight because, you know, I've waited this long. It feels like it's about a three-year battle to get this far. I've waited this long, and I've been so nervous and getting everything in place ready um, that I'll be absolutely devoted if I can't if I can't do it tomorrow. So I'm actually feeling a lot calmer. I've been so nervous and such a mess, um, but I'm actually feeling quite calm. Part well, I think underneath I'm worried. I'm just trying to get the dinner sorted and um, everything else. They, I had to go in on Monday for another blood test to get my blood type because they need to keep your blood on standby in case you have a transfusion. Because yeah, then that sort of really brought it home that it is major surgery. Plus, they said they put the bed for four nights in case I need it because um, it's like it's like a private hospital but that caters for NHS patients it's only the only thing they have those planned surgeries so there's not much chance of you know it getting delayed or cancelled or um, me getting pushed out early because I need a bed because they've already like catered for the fact that I could be there four nights um, so that's good Obviously I'm worried, there's a lot I'm worried about. I've spent a lot of time in Facebook groups, talking to people. I've had uh, made lots of friends, um, a couple of which have had theirs in the last few weeks. So picking everybody's brains. Here comes the spin cycle. Picking everyone's brains and getting myself prepared. I'm like proper armed with information. Because these, <coughs> this isn't good. I really hope, like, like, I said I haven't been ill for ages, I haven't had a cold or anything for ages, I survived all of Christmas doing people's nails without a cold and like broken up the day before with this. So I just really, really, really hope that it, it just stays like this. If it's like this I can cope. Um, so yeah, there's just so much going through my head but I'm trying to keep in mind that this is the beginning of feeling better. Um, this is, well, obviously I'm going to feel worse for a while but I'm hoping that, you know, it's not the start of more problems than it's the beginning of getting back to myself because it's been a long time. It's been pretty crap. Um, so, yeah, I don't know what else to say, really. I will, obviously, going to be doing a lot of vlogs the next few days and weeks to let you know how it goes. Um, but definitely, I think it's good to arm yourself with lots of information. I think if I hadn't, there's a few hurdles that would have really freaked me out. So for example, a lot of people they give a spinal to to like numb them and like so that when you wake up you're not in loads of pain. Um because that takes a while before it wears off. And if you said spinal to me and instantly you think of a big needle and everything else, it's like, oh no. And if that was sprung on me on the day, which it might be tomorrow, but if I hadn't been able to research it and think about it, I would probably freak out and say, no, no way. But like everyone's reassured that it doesn't actually hurt when they do it you don't feel it and it's so brilliant because afterwards um you know it numbs everything for a long time um so you don't come out in agony it's just a gradual thing but from what everyone said they've been really good with pain management everywhere because they don't want you to suffer um so i don't know and it's got an afternoon operation tomorrow um i've got to get there for one so I don't know where I am on the list, um, but I imagine that I will be pretty non compass mentis. Definitely going to be in overnight. Um, you know, I think it just varies so much from person to person. I mean, I've got quite a few people that have been in one night, lots of people that have been in two to three nights, um, and that's like without complications. So hopefully we don't get any complications, fingers crossed, but you just don't know what they're going to find until they get in there. Like... 
it's the unknown i think the unknown is the scary bit i don't know how long i'm going to be sick like i'm self-employed so it's like really hard financially no, I'm a single parent, little lost him, bless him, he's so worried. He said, I don't want him to put holes in you and put robot arms in you. It's like, oh. And I, I think he thinks it's like medieval torture and I had to reassure him, I won't be awake, I will be asleep and I won't feel a thing. And like, you know, they're not cutting massive holes in me and sticking big humongous robot arms in. So I've been trying to like keep him calm and reassured that, you know, nothing bad is going to happen i've got my friend coming in to stay and look after him and me up until sunday and then i've had to do a leave of absence request with the school because if i am in four nights i am not going to be capable of looking after austin by myself even though i'd have to help from all the lovely parents and everyone with school running stuff I, you know i'm not going to be able to you know cook and clean and drive and you know if anything were to like go wrong post-op i don't want that responsibility on a seven-year-old that's not fair um, he's worried enough as it is, poor little sod. So yeah, we're going to my mum's on Sunday. Um, so a week out of school, but then it's half term. So then we'll be at the two week point and hopefully, you know, I'll be able to do the small things and potter around and look after myself and the worst bits will have passed, fingers crossed. So we're just gonna see, I'm gonna have to play it by ear and I hate that because I'm so used to being independent and I wouldn't say I'm a control freak, but I'm used to doing my own thing and being at the mercy of other people letting you down and other people, you know, having to rely on other people. I hate it, I hate it, hate it, hate it. I'm so used to not having to do that. Um, so yeah, I'm worried. I got really tearful, I think on Sunday it was. Watched the last episode of Friends again. And I cried, and little Austin cried. I can't believe it's over. So, yeah, I'm just gonna carry on doing as much of the housework as I can get done. And because I'm not feeling great, I'm gonna have to just like leave some things. I think, well, if there's a pile of paperwork on the floor, it's not the end of the world. It's just gonna have to be there. So I have plenty of time when I'm like halfway better to sit and sort through that. Um, but yeah, I don't know what else to say really. Any questions, just post them below and. I will get back to you. And yeah, fingers crossed. I can't believe the day is finally going to be here. So bizarre. What's that noise? Oh, that's the oven. <laughs> All right. Scared. I am scared. But I'm not really feeling it. I'm a bit numb. I'm all over the place, let's be honest. Right, anyway, I'll update you as I go.